Awesome, awesome. It is almost the end of March, ladies. Can you believe it? Yeah. Welcome to Calling All Unicorns. I am your lead host for today. I'm Janine Letford, uh, CEO and founder of Cafe Strategies in the world of intercultural creativity. Of course, I am not alone. I have amazing, amazing, brilliant, creative, and naturalistic women with me. And uh, first, Vaughn, could you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Hi, Janine. Hi, Abigail. So I'm Vaughn. I'm the founder of WorkSmart, where I do team and leadership development all through creative integration, which basically means I do everything with the lens of creativity, play, and experiential learning. Awesome. Abigail. Hi, I'm Abigail, partner at Cairn Leadership Strategies, where we fuse rigorous leadership study with outdoor experiences. Awesome. Any crazy things going on in life today before we bring on our amazing guests? Well, I'm going to give a plug to Abigail because I am probably about a month away on heading on one of your crux adventures. We'll be hiking the Shenandoah Mountains, backpacking Shenandoah Mountains in Virginia, and I'm so excited for it. Um, awesome. I, I lured a couple girlfriends to come with me, so, so it's going to be a, a fun trip. Oh, it's one of my more. favorite ones, too. You Is get it? the alpine Good. star above the clouds. Oh, I'm so excited. It's very I'm opposite very from the one I did last year. I did the canoeing trip with them last year. Oh, that is awesome. It is definitely on my list of things to do. I know I keep saying that, but I think I just have to make it, it happen. And once again, we have a fabulous, fabulous show. I'm going to bring our amazing guest to the screen and I'm going to introduce him. He is the founder and executive director of Nature in the Classroom. It's a nonprofit that applies in nat nature art and science to create classroom environments, also hospital rooms as well. And this environment in the classroom supports teachers and students academically and emotionally. He's a retired educator and a school psychologist. And in 2002, Ernesto, our guest, founded Seren View to bring the science of viewing calming nature landscapes to the hospital patient bedside. And he's insert, um, installed all of these uh, curtains um, over about 3,000 hospitals nationwide and in Europe and Australia. He's provided psychological services for the U.S. State Department of Schools in Colombia and Saudi Arabia. He's founded the Ernesto Rodriguez Photography in 1988, which is commercial and fine art photography. His work is in the curator's collection at MoMA in New York and on exhibit at the Smithsonian. We do not bring you just anyone, we bring you the top guest to talk about creativity, business, entrepreneurship, our wellness, and welcome to the show, Ernesto. Thank you so, so much for having me today. It's really an, an honor and a treat to, to be here with you all and, and uh, to have the conversation we're about to have. Right. So before we jump into questions and Ab, Abigail is going, going to start, just kind of give us a, a just quick background in what you do and why you do it. With the, the, the latest venture that I'm doing with schools is uh, it, it's still uh, the love of uh, being working in education. Uh, as, a, as a trained early childhood psychologist, I really, really enjoyed the classroom. K kids are, are funny. They're little comedians, uh, especially the younger ones, boy, kindergartners. And, and, and it's funny who understands this concept of bringing the outdoors inside is, is the young kids, they get it right away. Uh, so it really is, is a, a pleasure to be back in the classroom. Uh, the most wonderful compliment I've ever received professionally has come from a, a four-year-old who just thanked me for having, uh, bringing the trees into the classroom. Um, so we're just getting started down this road. And as with any new idea that's never been in the marketplace before, uh, you have difficulty communicating what it is because there's no context for people to wrap their heads around. So un unless people experience it directly, and even then, uh, it becomes difficult to to explain to them, even though there's 50 years of science behind what we're doing. It's like, well, what's the downside to this? It's like, ask, ask a kindergartner. There is no downside. 
Well, we, we, so, you are in um, a great group because we all know what it is like to go against the grain, right, ladies, and, and to have to continue to um, present the business case for what we uh, do. But Abigail, why don't you uh, jump, jump in? Yeah, Ernesto, I'm excited to talk with you as we share our love of the outdoors and the, the fundamental belief that we know is backed by science, but providing the experience for people to get exposed to nature. So can you share a little bit more about how you got started and why it's so critical now for kids and employees to get access to the outdoors and to experiences related to the outdoors? It, it, it seems like, and this happened in, in the 90s when video games were introduced, the, the late 90s, and, and the more these games have been, uh, you know, permeating the culture, it seems like, like kids are spending less and less time outside. And the consequence of that has been an increase in uh, attention deficit disorder. There was a school in Texas uh, about five, six years ago, they tripled outside time in both recess and experiences and pretty much wiped out ADHD in that school district. So there's, there's, uh, we get our uh, replenishment mentally by being outdoors. And what attention restoration theory uh, that came out of the University of Michigan has taught us is that when we view trees or foliage, what it does is that it calms us it helps us focus and it helps us engage. And it, you know, I think that's probably a pretty basic wiring of who we are as a species. And, and it's something that is uh, necessary for our survival. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you uh, an example. Um, well, this, was, this was a while, I, I can't even remember when we, when we did this, but I did a project for the Veterans Administration for, for their hospitals. They wanted, um, when they found out about our hospital curtains, <clears throat> they said, well, we want things that are iconic to the military. <clears throat> we want tanks and planes. And I said, no, 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 look, there, there's, there's science behind what we're doing. I said, do you want something patriotic? Why don't we go do the national parks? We'll do vistas of the national parks. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, okay. So my assistant and I took off and we spent six weeks in the wilderness in day 10, something happened that we both experienced that I, I can't describe in the words. It was just a feeling, but day 10, it was just like a light switch was flipped on in our, in our brain and we didn't feel separate from the environment. It's like, like my body didn't end where my hand ended. It was, it was like we were connected to everything. And after that, it seemed like the animals reacted completely different to us. It's like they weren't afraid of us. We were able to walk through a herd of elk. There were moose, there were, I mean, we were able to walk five, six feet from animals. And, and whenever I set up to do a shot, we might be there for, for a few hours. So my assistant was laying down, taking a nap, and this bear walks up to him and just starts snipping him. And Mark wakes up and looks at him. It's just like, and the bear just kind of walked off. So there is, is, what we are wired for to, to look at and be in the natural environment gets, gets kind of clouded over by being on the freeway and driving and whatnot, but it's there. And if you get out regularly and take a walk or take a hike or, you know, just hit the pause button, uh, you have access to that. And what it does is it calms you, it helps you focus and it opens you up to the, the world of ideas. And, and the ideas that, that, uh, um, you know, have come to me have never been because I was directly working on doing something to, to you know, uh, that was engaged. I was usually, you know, out in the wilderness somewhere. Um, it's so much to say about this, but we know from the research too directly, I can post the article yeah. about uh, spending time in nature three days outdoors is proven to it boost creativity by 50% more creative problem solving. So we know the benefits. And I love how you highlighted that experience of your interaction with nature too. It's that experience of awe where we 
get a sense of vastness and then we're driven to accommodate others and accommodate our surroundings in a pro-social way. So I, I have a feeling we have lots of long conversations ahead of us, Ernesto. I'm excited. Yeah, no, the, 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 the magic word you said there was awe. And, and uh, where I had my idea to put uh, Nature Vistas in, uh, in the hospital room was I was sitting in the redwoods working on a picture and I'm waiting for the light. And I just sat there because I had to, I wanted the light coming through the trees. And I, I had just visited a friend in the hospital and I thought, wow, poor Dave. So they didn't even give him binoculars to watch TV with him. He had this tiny little TV at the, you know, in the corner of his room. And I said, now, if, if, if he was sitting like, and hospitals have always uh, really, I've always been afraid of hospitals. And I felt so nurtured by the forest. I thought, you know, good grief. If, if, if hospitals felt like this, maybe I wouldn't be so creeped out by them. And, and that, that was the genesis of the idea. And then that stuck with me and I came back and I started running into research about how nature vistas in hospitals, you know, help patients. And, and, uh, and, and then the universe stepped up and, and helped me put together this idea. I have, I have two patents with that uh, idea that it resulted in. Beautiful so, with the creativity and the create um, nature and then the business aspect, right? Business and, uh, yes, we know right. that creativity is good for biz business. And Vaughn, what did you you wish to ask? Sure. Well, Ernest, I'm already a big fan of yours. We had a chance to talk a little bit before we started, and I will be taking the little boat over to Catalina to visit you and maybe do some scuba diving. Um, I just in hearing what you had to say about bringing creativity and, and bring it's creative and bringing nature into the classroom. Uh, I have a son who's nine years old, who frankly does not like to go to school. Right. And he does have a very creative um, environment. And I think about when I was his age and all through school, those ceilings, those pictures you showed Janine, like how many hours do we stare at those little dots in those ceilings? Right. When we could have been looking <laughs> at nature um, and it really does force us to connect with something other than ourselves and something greater than ourselves. I really love what you're doing. And you. the foundation of the creativity is this idea that we are making connections where, where connections are not normally made. And that's what you've done. You brought, brought nature into the classroom. And I, I know you talked a little bit about your research, but I'm wondering, you know, real life results. What benefits have you seen from this? Well, it's interesting because because Telemundo did a story on this. Uh, and it showed how it is, uh, especially with the pandemic, how it has been so instrumental in helping kids manage anxiety. Uh, it has completely oh, calmed that. down, uh, calm kids down. It, it, uh, it's, it's giving teachers an extra 10 minutes a day to teach because the kids are more engaged and focused. That's an extra 30 hours of instruction per year. So who knows what that's going to lead to? And, and we just, uh, we're getting ready to do a large installation next week in, in Corona uh, because we did one of their wellness rooms. And before the room was finished, they had this, this fifth grader just has this emotion. They bring her into the, the, the wellness room. And when she saw the ceiling, it calmed her down. And they, <laughs> taken aback by it. It's just like, well, was this a coincidence? But they've continued to use it and they find and starting to bring kids in there and they're finding out that lo and behold, it calms people down and it helps them focus. So after seeing that, they decided we want this in our classrooms. So that's what we're getting ready to do next oh, week. Wow. We're going to start doing classrooms in, in the in the Corona district. So. That's amazing. And it really speaks to what Janine talked about earlier is being able to tell these stories uh, and the impact you've made, right? Like the, like the, the three of us, we are constantly educating people on the value of what we do before we can sell them what we do. And I feel like this is the same thing that, that, that you're doing through, through the stories of the impact you're making. Yeah. And, what, and what's like, difficult? Oh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, well, likewise, with intercultural creativity and, and the work that Abigail is doing and, and, um, and Vaughn, it's an idea that has met its time, you know, because everyone right. is looking right now for answers. And when you back everything up with the science, the neuroscience and just people 
are really valuing life in a different way. I I, I hope after the pan pandemic, you know, yeah. your idea is an idea that, especially school, school is shifting. You know, you and I spoke at, um, we met at the charter school conference last week and that's where I found out about your work and the teachers, the school leaders, they know we're in a shift. So the fact that we can really introduce your work and I'm excited to, to put your work in my, my work, you know, put it in my books and stuff and use your stories as a key example of what this looks like. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's like, like I said earlier, it's difficult to, to communicate a new idea that doesn't have a context to it. So, <clears throat> I mean, with, with what I learned from with the hospital industry, because we, we started that from just boldly going in and, and seeing who would do it. And very few people wanted to touch it. And, and with new ideas, uh, there was a great book called Crossing the Chasm that was written in 1992 about how new ideas make it into the mainstream. And, and the example he uses there, he says, the electric car, it's here. And this is 92 now, mind you. He says, the electric car is here, when are you buying? And that sets up a bell-shaped curve of where you're at in accepting something that's brand new. They're 2%, they're innovators, they want something no matter what it is, I've gotta have that. And then the early adopters is the next like 18% of that population before you get to the early majority. But you've got to have that 20% approval before the early majority will look to say, okay, we, we, we want to have that. And then it, 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 it progresses through that population, be it culturally or be it a specific, a specific population is like a culture. It has demographics of who you're dealing with. That, that, I got to tell you, the hospital industry has its own demographic and it's completely different than education. <laughs> so uh, what I learned from dealing with the hospitals is how about if we find an, an let's work with people who already understand this concept and see if they can introduce this to schools to see if we can shortcut this business of explaining what we're doing. Because like I said, I could bring in a kindergartner and tell them what we're doing and they get it right away. Adults, mm, takes a little work. So I hooked up with tree people and tree people introduced me to schools and that the people that were there understood the science were already doing it and said, yes, we can, we can make this, <laughs> this will, make our life so much easier. The schools that are doing it uh, are using it in uh, uh, applying mindfulness exercises to help kids deal with the pandemic. Uh, even as young as, as kindergarten, uh, the, the kindergartners, they get it, but uh, kids are still feeling, feeling stressed. So, uh, you know, finding an ally, like-minded individuals who understand what, we, what you're doing, has helped us get off the ground a lot quicker than, than it did with the hospital curtains. So, Awesome, awesome. So that was the link. I, I guess, I don't know how, how to share it so people can, can click on it, but definitely reach out if you're looking for research. Ladies, did you have any more pressing questions or any more connections? I, I, I just love the connect the bridge between the classroom and Abigail said she works with mostly, you know, middle man management. There's some early career people, but because of my interesting position with the whole pipeline, I've gotten to work with four-year-olds all the way to adults, but you seem to be the, you know, the bridge between getting our kids ready and then Abigail continues to work when they're like middle management, right? <laughs> well, and I'm wondering too, you know, this work that you're doing in the classroom, what about the corporate environment, right? <laughs> like applying um, that to the environment there. They, they, they have been, and I believe me, I, I've tried, uh, and they have been very resistant. Yes. And perhaps I haven't crafted my message correctly. Um, I don't know, but you know, we we uh, had done like conference rooms or um, places where people uh, go relax. Uh, the, 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 in a, the pandemic, I think, has brought this to the forefront. And Absolutely. the well, same I, thing I happened. Would... No, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
I was just encourage you to not give up on it, right? I, I, I clearly there's value. There's value for children. There's value for adults, and I firmly oh, believe yeah. that, particularly when it comes to anything creative. Um, and I would have to say that when I first started my business, bring creativity into the corporate world, it was not well received, and it was you know it had a lot to do with um, the timing of it, and and also like you said, the crafting of my message. So it's. It's it's us being playful and creative about how we approach it, right? Rather than just saying we're we're not gonna rather than saying I'm not gonna go there, just saying like a like how else can might I do it? So yeah, one of the marketing campaigns we did, we Knight and I, my business partner, we went to the local rock climbing crag and we wore business clothes. So we had on I had on red high heels and I'm belaying in my <laughs> business attire to get people's attention to stop scrolling on LinkedIn to say, what are they doing? It's like outdoor adventure means business. You need to start making the link between these two things and not think that it should be relegated to free time because we know how it can affect the impact of bottom line. So, so true. And I can even see, you know, maybe an extension of Abigail's work. Like, did you love this? Bring it into your office space. You know, <laughs> it's just like all of us are, are connected, you know, and I, I um, talk, talk about Vaughn's work in, in my, my work because it's like, hey, you want new new ways to open up your thinking? Check out our, our Lego master, <laughs> you know? And so we need to show people that, yeah, all the work that we're doing is uh, connected and to, for them to continue their, their growth. Yeah, I, and, and I tell people, I say, look, this is not a substitute for getting outside. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's essential that you get outside. In, in education, however, uh, uh, teachers and kids spend 98% of their day indoors, often without views to, to greenery. So especially in, when you get into the inner city, it's, it, you know, the schools are boarded up. You can't see out windows. They're making schools now without, without windows because of all the mitigating the violence that has, you know, been progressing in the last 20 years. Um, so how do you, how do you bring that back, bring these benefits back that we know are there? And I mean, there's a cheap way to do it. So yeah. and, and, and now, now you're getting into a justice issue because there's some kids mm -hmm. who have access to, you know, nature, hike, hiking, schools that have um, open areas and they're safe. And then you have other kids who don't have access. So if they're building schools, which breaks my heart without windows, yeah. you know, it's almost mm -hmm. mandatory to have your solution in schools to counteract for, for that, I, I would say. And, and, and the other factor is there's roughly 10 million students in portable classrooms and trailers mm. because of crowding in, in urban schools mm. and often no views out windows there. Um, so these are all factors that, that influence uh, performance. Mm -hmm. the, the, the interview that Telemundo did with, with the kids at Gage Middle School is really wonderful because the kids were talking about how it stimulates their creativity and how, how the trees have become the reason they love coming to school. And uh, okay. fostering that love of education, I think, is key for people to continue that as in adulthood is, is, is you, you keep wanting to learn new ideas about whatever it is that you love to do. And, and hopefully, you know, education, that's what it leaves you with, that love of learning. Yes. Awesome, awesome. Did anyone wish to, to jump in? I mean, I, it just resonates with me, right? This idea of, of giving children the ability to love learning. And it may not be, it may not seem like a direct route. It's like, oh, you know, change their environment and give them the love of le learning. They, people are, are constantly talking about like how our teachers teaching and um, the teaching methodologies. But sometimes, you know, I walked in my son's classroom the other day, we were back on campus again, and the teacher had placed little roses in these glass jars on each of their desks. Wow. And it was so impactful. It was just so beautiful to see that on each child's desk, you know, the, the environment, like you're like what you're doing, the environment absolutely matters. And he talked about that for, for days, right? Like, yeah. That was the only thing he talked about for days, not what he was learning in school, not playing with his friends. He talked about how the roses were doing. It's <laughs> such a, it's such a direct connection to another human. I mean, and that's, that's what yes. this does. And, and, and that's what, what um, 
you know, as when we survived as hunter gatherers, we relied on each other to assess the environment around us to 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 stay healthy, really, either being able to about what you could eat in the trees or was there something in the trees that was trying to eat us? So either way, it, it's a community sense of when you view foliage and the patterns in it, you know, how it affects mm -hmm. us. Right. Yeah, I, I, I had my, uh, my, my son out in nature and, I, and it just dawned on me that every standard, because I taught third, third grade and I've, I've taught in the classroom for 15 years and every standard that I needed to teach, I actually can teach in nature. I can teach math, of course, biology, um, you know, geom geometry, first, middle, last, writing, influential writing systems, every standard that, that I could, needed to teach my students, I actually found inherent in nature. And if you look at the work of Malcolm Malcolm Gardner, I, I think it's well, Gar Gardner's work is his last name. He talks about the multiple intelligences, right? And a lot of times we focus on the logical and mathematical and we celebrate those, but you know, the musical, the kinesthetic, and there's also a naturalist that he highlighted people who are, who are highly intelligent in the naturalist realms. And mm -hmm. the study that I have shows the brain areas that are actually affected by people who are stronger in that area. And so now that we bring this in, and I can forward you that, that research, but now that more people are interested in the neuroscience behind of business and creativity and in innovation, we actually have more of a case because the, the fMRIs are actually allowing us to see more than 20 years ago. And so I just think, just give it time. You're going to hit and then you're going to be so busy that you won't know what to do with yourself. You're going to have to hire more employees and all that good stuff. And you'll be, you know, putting it in businesses and off, off offices. So that's what I see uh, on your horizon. And so as we, we close, close up, any last thoughts, Ernesto? Get outside, spend time outside at, you know, at least two, three days a week, you know, sit under a tree, but just get outside. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. And people can find you at natureintheclassroom.org? Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, uh, we just wanted to thank you so much for joining our show, for sharing the importance of this work. And we do end with just a small tidbit of what we are doing. So let's go with Abigail. What's going on in your world? Yeah. So this year we launched access to leadership adventure subscriptions. So it's for gritty professionals who want to get outside on a regular basis. We have 30 to choose from and it's important to gain that perspective with other leaders by going through a shared challenge. So mm -hmm. you can find us. I also posted about their get outside now, the blog. So you can see some of the research and links we have about why this, our collective interest in getting outside is so important to fuel creativity. Wonderful. Thank you. Ms. Vaughn. Well, first of all, as you can see, I'm not working out of my normal space. My friend is out of town and we're over here at her place working, watering her plants. And I spotted a pool downstairs. So I think I'm going to sit by the pool and stare at a tree after this. Ernesto, thank you for that, um, you know, for, for that thought. And as far as what's new with WorkSmart, um, I actually want to share the, the, uh, something that's not with WorkSmart. True Cycle Coaching is a company that I started doing work with. I'm partnering with them. Um, through WorkSmart, I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but through True Cycle, what I'm able to do is bring my creative modalities into executive coaching. So that is a partnership that I just started a couple months ago and it's been going really well. And, um, and yeah, so if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching through the methodologies of creativity, uh, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn and I will um, share with you how we're doing that at True Cycle. Wonderful. Yes. Reach out to all of us on LinkedIn. I know Vaughn is certainly uh, someone I call a mentor with brilliant, brilliant ways of making you see the world and definitely check out all of the events that Miss Abigail has. And so thank you so much for sharing for me. Of course, it's just back to, to the books. I'm just really excited to, to get my work out there about the seven gems of intercultural creativity. And it was really cool to see my son and I uh, going to the CCSA event and he got to sell his book and actually give it to the people who are buying his book like you're gonna live here you're gonna work i'm like <laughs> but, 
<laughs> but I just want him to know that he is creative and his ideas have value. And if he wants to put them on the, to the marketplace, and that's true. So we got to sell our books at the CCSA, but just go check out um, Cafe Strategies or JennyLetford.com if you want it to your copy. And thank you so much, Ernesto, for joining us. Thank you, ladies, for carving out this time. And we are telling you to shine bright, bright be a unicorn where you are. Don't forget to stand out, stand up, and uh, stand up for, for justice and bring nature in the classroom and then get outside and work with nature as well. We will see you next time. And thank you.